Okay, so this is a story about how God delivered me from homosexuality. I didn't start out gay. Um, I was not born gay. Uh, I was actually married before I became gay, but there were a lot of contributing fact factors that um, opened that door for me or made it attractive to me. Um, so what happened was I grew up in a house where I was unwanted, I was unloved. Um, my mother just treated my father like garbage and um, he was devastated and humiliated and um, he took me and my sisters from my mom. She said she didn't want to be a mother, she didn't want to be a wife. And, um, and so my dad um, took us and we were treated like his worst mistake. You know, I feel like that's how he felt about us when he was young. Um, I think, you know, to him, we were just evidence of a bad uh, decision that he made. So always getting criticized, always feeling like I didn't belong in that family, always trying to get accepted into in my own home, um, not doing anything wrong, but my dad always having a problem with me. You know, he would say things like, get out of here, kids, you bother me. You know, if I just wanted to be around and watch him work on his motorcycle or, or anything like that, you know, it was a problem. So, I grew up feeling like there was something wrong with me because I, I was too young to process what was going on. I, I had no idea that he had emotional problems that he didn't know how to deal with and he was, you know, not managing his emotions well, blah, blah, blah. So always experiencing rejection in my home and um, so always looking for acceptance. And then... Um, Hey, you two, please. My dogs. Anyway, um, I, my father married another woman after my mother, uh, after he and my, mo my mother divorced. And I guess probably because he treated us like we were an inconvenience and like he really didn't want us, that opened the door for her to basically become like Cruella DeVille and just shred us emotionally. It was bad. So, um, uh, they put me out when I was 16. They put all of us out when we were 16. My older sister had to go when she was 16. My younger sister had to go. Well, my younger sister begged them um, to be able to finish high school. So the day she graduated from high school, they sent her in a cab pack to nowhere. So she was homeless. And um, so when I turned 16, um, they put me out and um, I had a boyfriend. We had been seeing each other since I was 14. He was way older than I was. Like he was um, in college. And um, so, we had planned on getting married when I turned 18 anyway. Um, and when I turned 16 and my, my stepmother gave my dad an ultimatum and said that if I didn't go by January, then she was leaving. Uh, and my dad decided to put me out. And so my boyfriend married me. My dad signed the paperwork for me to get married at 16. So I go into this marriage with a broken heart because my dad, I loved my dad and I was, you know, always trying to get his approval and couldn't understand why um, nothing I ever did was good enough and all that kind of stuff. And um, so um, when my dad threw me away, I felt like, you know, he treated me like trash at 16, um, putting me out. Um, when my dad treated me like trash, my ex-husband treated me like a treasure and he married me and um, I adored him. 
I adored him and I poured everything I had into our love. And um, then I found out that he was cheating on me. I, I, I <laughs> God spoke to me and told me where the evidence was that he was cheating on me. Cause I was, I was a kid and I had no idea. I just had this feeling in my heart and, uh, and I, I had no evidence or anything. And, um, if y'all, y'all hear this noise, it's, it's my puppy. He is chewing, he is teething <laughs> and he's just chewing on this hook or whatever it is. It's a part of a water buffalo, but that, that's what that crunchy sound is in the, in the background. Sorry about that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> love the puppies. Um, so when I found out that my ex-husband was cheating on me, um, I left him. And then I went back to my parents' house, my father's house. And um, an unfortunate thing happened. Uh, I, I got attacked. I uh, almost got raped by uh, a man that um, I'm not sure if my sister actually set me up to be raped by him, but she invited him over. Um, hold on one second, y'all. I'm so sorry. Frederick Douglass and Duchess. Um, I, I don't know if, she, I don't know if she set me up to be raped, but she invited this guy over to our house to have relations with him. And he wound up attacking me and almost raping me. And it was traumatic. And I, uh, I, I developed a fear of men. I became scared of men because all the important men in my life, um, my dad rejecting me all the time, you know, my whole life um, after him and my mother broke up. And then um, my ex-husband, I felt like his cheating on me. Uh, I, I took that as processed that as rejection. And then this Yahoo from who knows where that, you know, my sister dug up, uh, attacked me. Um, I, I just, I was like, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I just, I was traumatized. I was traumatized. And, um, so I, I was like, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to be with another man again. No, they're dangerous. They're, you know, you can't satisfy them. And no matter how good you are to them, they're going to take you for granted, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, uh, I, just, and, and then too, also, um, my ex-husband, um, we were together for four years, at least four years. Um, and I never had one orgasm. Well, ever. I never had one orgasm. And when I would talk to him about it or try to talk to him about it and say, you know, come on, let's try, you know, let's, let's do some different things. Let's, you know, let's do it in the park. Let's do it in the dark. Let's do it over here. Let's do it over there. You know, just different, something different. Let's get some spice up in here. And, um, and he'd be like, no, come on, just get in the bed, get in the middle of the bed. And, and I'll be like, but hey, you know, you getting a lot more out of this than I'm getting out of this. You know, every single time we do something, you, you know, you get yours, but I'm not getting mine. And he, and he said to me, well, none of my other girlfriends ever complained. Maybe there's something wrong with you. And he was such an important person to me and I was so young and inexperienced. Um, I, t I took that in and I thought maybe there is something wrong with me. Maybe, maybe there is something wrong with me. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm gay. And then that was like a year before um, I left him. And so when I did leave him, 
and then um, the incident that happened where I almost got raped, um, that was, I was like, you know what? I'm free now. I can, I, let me see what's on the other side. And so I did. I started going to, um, you know, gay clubs and meeting people. And um, uh, the first thing I realized when I was gay and I started, you know, trying it was that a lot of gay women don't know what they doing in bed. It was trash. It was trash. It was trash. I couldn't believe it. I was like, hold on now. You said you've been gay for how long? You've been gay for years? And uh, you have all these parts and you don't know what to do? I was like, oh, no. So I made up my mind that if I was going to be gay, then I was going to be good uh, and um, to, you know, to my girlfriends. And also, I looked at it like, what can I do in my relationships to make sure that my girlfriends don't check out like my ex-husband did, you know, where I'm giving all my love and all my attention and 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 being good to them and they still wind up cheating, you know, or, or leaving or whatever. And so I was like, well, shoot, uh, I bet you if I become the best lover that they ever had, they won't think about leaving. And so I went on a quest. I uh, became determined to learn all the intricacies you know, of the female body and how to become a great lover. And I stumbled across some techniques and some things. And I used to, I used to give, make sure that my girlfriends had at least 10 orgasms in a, under an hour. Cause you know, I'm a female and you know, being up there on them shoulders after a while, you know, you sure just get the hurt. So, you know, I had to get it in. <laughs> um, so I, um, I had a girlfriend. Well, she was just a friend, um, who was a girl and she, she liked me. She was attracted to me, but I wasn't attracted to her. Um, she wasn't ugly or anything like that. She just, um, our personalities just didn't gel. And um, so I knew she liked me and, you know, I told her, I was like, well, look, I'm new to this lifestyle. I was like, and I, I really don't know what to do in the bedroom and I don't want a relationship, but would you mind having some practice sessions with me? <laughs> And she said yeah. She said yes. Um, she jumped at it. So we experimented with, you know, everything. We experimented with um vibrators, which I, I really didn't like that. There's just too much going on. Um, we experimented, I learned, you know, how to give really good head to a woman. Um, and I learned how to use a strap on, you know, make my own tailor made to fit, all that good stuff. And um yeah. So I tricked their body out. <laughs> I yeah, so we I got really, really good in the bedroom with the women. And so after that, oh my goodness. Yeah, I had a really good time being gay and um I was I was loving it I was loving it I I found all the acceptance that I never got from my family you know um I got loved 
and reciprocity in my relationships with women. Um, everything that I wanted, everything that I wanted, uh, faithfulness, um, all of that stuff. And so I was very, very happy. I was very, very happy. I, I was not, I, I looked at men as a big gamble that wasn't worth taking. That's just how I looked at men. Um, and so I had several different girlfriends, um, you know, not, not a whole, whole, whole bunch, but just, you know, I was, I was always in a committed relationship, but, uh, I, I had went through something traumatic early on, um, uh, when I first became gay, my girlfriend, um, died in my arms. Yeah, that's another story. I'll, I'll put, I'll link that story to this story. You need, you need to subscribe. Just subscribe and you'll get all the stories, okay? So, um, yeah, my girlfriend, uh, early on, she died in my arms. Uh, she got killed by her sister and she died in my arms. And I was head over heels for this girl. She was so dynamic and phenomenal and all this and sexy and oh, just all that and um so when sam died her name was sam uh samantha brown um when sam died after she died uh i was so traumatized and i was dead inside and but i still had females after me I guess because I had developed a reputation. Um, and so, I, you know, like I, I had a girlfriend and, well, we were friends and she wanted to be with me. And I told her I'm not, I'm not in any shape to be in a relationship. She didn't care. She was like, you know, I want to be with you anyway. I can wait until you come around, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it was just, it, it it wasn't good. It wasn't a good start. And so, you know, eventually like I would leave and it, it would be drama because I done tricked her body out and <laughs> she don't want to go and just, oh man. So yeah, but um, I did have good relationships when, um, when I was, when I was gay. Well, they, they were good to me. I don't know. So I got to the point where I felt like I had found the one. I um I was I was in college. She we both went to the same school and um she was playing basketball and I um <laughs> I was a stripper. <laughs> Um, I'll tell stories about that. I will, I will tell those stories. Just subscribe. So anyway, um, I was a stripper and, you know, we, we were just having fun. We were just young and having fun. And, but she had a beautiful personality. She had a beautiful personality. And, um, I was, I was, I was really in love with her. And I was in, I was planning on marrying her. I wanted to marry her. Uh, I, I was trying to figure out how I could, you know, get the money up to have one of my eggs artificially inseminated and then implanted into her so she could have my baby. I mean, I was gay. I was gay. I was all the way there. And um, I wanted to marry her. And this was way back. This was way before gay marriage was even a discussion. This was, um, oh boy, it was like the 2000s, like 2000 um, or 1999. This was, you know, this was a while ago. Um, so I'm thinking about marrying her and I want to marry her and, um, and I'm stripping and uh, smoking weed. Like I, 
I did not, I was not going to church at all. I wasn't thinking about church. I was not. The, the only time I thought about God was I was hoping that he wasn't paying attention to me. I was like, I'll leave God alone and I hope he leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I was hoping that we could we have a peaceful coexistence, you know, where I mind my business and I stay out of God's way, you know, and please just don't look over here, Jesus. <laughs> so that's where I was in my mind and in my life. And um, one day, um, my roommate's brother uh, came home. He had been living in Arizona and I knew them for like six years. They were, um, they're twins. And um, so she was my best friend. I wasn't her best friend, but she was my best friend. And um, I looked up to her and uh, uh, we were always together and so I knew her brother you know I had always known her brother um, but I was very gay and I was not interested in um, in man man things at all so um, he came home from Arizona <laughs> and uh, we went to go pick him up from the airport and I saw him while he was on the plane. Like we were at the gate and you know how the, the plane pulls up and then you have that long walkway, you know, that they pull out to the plane or whatever and then y'all come off or whatever. And you know how the, them little windows on the airplane, they're real small, right? I saw him, I just saw his arm and I knew it was him. How did I know that that was him? I don't know, but I saw him on that plane. And I was like, what? And then he came off the plane. <laughs> and when I tell you, this man was so goddamn fine, I couldn't take it. I had to, I had to get myself together. He was in that Arizona sun. His skin got burnt orange. It was not caramel it was not brown he had it it was like burnt orange it was so beautiful and then he had his dreads and everything was like and he filled out you know he grew up and everything and god darn you know i was just like oh just, just stop it stop just be quiet <laughs> so, i could but but i kept my mouth shut though because he was a guy he was a guy and i i hadn't been attracted to a man in years and um but yeah i was i was definitely attracted but i didn't say anything to him i didn't say anything to anybody because i was just gonna let that thing pass okay um but after a couple of days God spoke to me because he had come to stay with me and uh, my roommate um, just for a couple of days, you know, just like a week or whatever, you know, they want to catch up and, uh, you know, they missed each other and everything. Um, that twin thing, I don't know. But uh, so he was staying with us and, you know, the whole time that he's staying with us, you know, Looking at people, I ain't saying nothing to nobody. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's this internal conflict going on. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just like that woman is just smelling herself. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> um, one night, I'm by myself. I'm in my bedroom. And I heard a voice clear as day. It came, it came from within me, but it wasn't me. Um, I did not have a relationship with God at the time, none. I did not 
I, I did not care, you know, about religion or anything. I didn't have an anti-religion mentality, but it just was not on my radar. I just wasn't worried about it. But I heard this voice and it was quite firm. And it, the voice asked me a question. It said, Brandy, are you gonna be with men or are you gonna be with women? And I <laughs> clutched my pearls like, <sighs> I heard it, I felt it. And it came with this feeling that it was mandatory that I answer this question. So I would, I had a dilemma. I was, ugh, I really had to think about it, you know, like, why would I, why would I want to be with a man again? Why? Why? It's just too much trouble. They're too unpredictable. They're not trustworthy. You can't please them. What? They don't please me. Why? Why would I want to be with a man? Why? You know, I was really thinking about that. I mean, beyond, yeah, he was sexy to me, you know, but that was just a physical uh, attraction. That's not sustainable. That's not sustainable because you can be just as attractive as you want to. But if I'm not getting my heart catered to, we don't have anything to talk about. We can't agree on anything. Our goals don't line up. We don't, you know, our, our, where we want to be in life or how we want to raise a family doesn't add up. It doesn't gel. You know, you, uh, oh God. And if it's not popping off in the bedroom too, get out of here. It's just, please, a waste of time, a waste of time. That's how I felt about it at that time. So... I'm thinking about it. It took, I was thinking about it. I was, because I was happy. I was happy with my girlfriend. I was, man, I was happy with my girlfriend. She was, she was everything. She was cool. She was so cool. She was beautiful. She had a great personality. We had so much fun. It was easy, like butter, you know? We didn't have arguments. We just played and laughed and had all kinds of pleasure and, you know, just, we just got along, you know, she wasn't on no bullshit and neither was I. Um, but this voice, you know, and like the, the, the commanding feeling of that voice, I, I couldn't, I could not ignore it. I could not ignore it. I had to answer the question, but I really didn't, I really didn't know how to answer it. And then one night, a couple nights later, God gave me a dream and it was like a, a, a two part dream. I didn't know it was God at the time, but I know it, it was God now because I've, I've, had so many experiences with God. Like I, I know how he um, communicates with me. So anyway, um, I had a dream that I married a man. I had a dream that I married a man and we were happy and we had a child. I saw this little boy, you know, this little part of me and part of him running around playing. And we got older. And even though we got older and passed on, life continued because of the child. And then the dream switched. And I saw me and my girlfriend at that time. I saw us. And we were old. 
and we had our little matching sweaters on. We had our little, we had matching homemade sweaters. I probably made them because I'm quite crafty. You like my earrings? I made these. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My bracelets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I, I probably made the sweaters. Um, but we had matching sweaters on and we had matching canes and we were sitting on our uh, porch and um, just sitting there. And when we got ready to, we walked into the house and then the story ended. And I got the feeling that when we died, that was it. We was just gone. No more life. And um, so the dream was really, it felt real. It was, it, it was very specific. It, 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 it resounded within me. It stuck with me, like every detail of it. I remembered everything and um, it made an impact on me. And so when I woke up from that dream, I said it out of my mouth. I was like, Okay, God, I'll give men another try. And when I said that, every sexual feeling, every sexual attraction type of feeling, all the lustful feelings that I had for women was gone. It was just gone. It was just gone. I never, I never had to fight about it. You know, I never had to fight myself about it. Like, oh my gosh, look at her. She looks so good. Look at that ass. Look at that ass. Look at that ass. <laughs> you know, that that was how I was. You know, when I was gay, I wouldn't say those things out loud, but it would run through my body. You know, like I would see a beautiful woman, a beautiful dark skinned chocolate woman with a body yaddy yaddy, just bottom, you know, and just little teeny perky breasts, and, you know, or brown skin sugar or light skin red bone. Oh boy, you know, white girl. Hispanic girl, I like women, Asian girl. I loved women. You know what I mean? I just liked women. I like I, I think, you know, all of us are beautiful in our own way. All of us are beautiful. Um but all those feelings gone. Gone. I never had to struggle with it. I never had to struggle with it. And I didn't understand. I, I I didn't understand once those feelings were gone, then I realized that that was God speaking to me. And um, yeah, he took the gay away and he wanted me to stop stripping. <laughs> so, you know, I left the women alone and I stopped dancing. And um, yeah, and I, I, I didn't understand why he took it away because, um, I, you know, I, I didn't have a relationship with him. So of course I didn't understand his ways. Of course I didn't understand, you know, anything um, about him and why he did what he did. Uh, so I just didn't understand, but I felt like it must be important to him. Like this this really must be important to him. Because I was doing everything. I was smoking weed, I was stripping, I was um what else was I doing? Well, I was going to college. And I had a job and I was taking care of myself. What those was the most things I was doing. I was gay and I, I would smoke weed, but you know, I, I really didn't feel like anything that I was doing was anything worse than what anybody else did, does, you know, in some way, shape, form or fashion. Um, I didn't, I didn't understand it. And I still don't to this day. I still, I still don't to this day. Like right now, 
I'm a huge Christian. I'm so in love with God now. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing to, to be loved by him. God's love is just so good. It's so tender and it's so good. And it's it's the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And a lot of what a lot of these preachers are saying in church is is bullshit. Okay? And I'm just gonna say it like that. A lot of the things that a lot of these preachers say in churches is bullshit because a lot of the people that are in pulpits don't even know God, never met him, never heard his voice, never spent any real time with him. So they don't know what he's about and they don't know what he's like. And he's not this stern, mean, ready to strike you with a lightning bolt as soon as you make any He's not like that at all, at all, at all. And so, um, you know, it's a whole different, it's a whole different world now but back you know but even now that I, I spend a lot of time with God you know and he speaks to me he speaks to me and he shows me things he'll explain anything to you he'll explain it, stuff to you um and I and I, I also haven't asked why you know homosexuality is uh is such a big is such a big um big deal to him I haven't asked. I haven't. I haven't worried about it. So that's the only reason why I still don't know to this day. Cause I just have more important things on my mind. That's not on my radar anymore. But um, yeah, I didn't know why it was a big deal to him to to take it from me, um, and to show up like that, you know. Um, but I figured since he personally showed up in my life to ask me about that and to put a demand on me about that um it must be important to him so i'm not going to go back to it because i had plenty of opportunities to go back to it you know i had developed a little reputation for myself so um you know i had plenty of opportunities to go back to it but I, I just I, I didn't I, I didn't want to I didn't um, that proved to me that God was real you know and so now that I realized that he was really real and he's paying attention to me uh <laughs> let's not rock this boat <laughs> I was like let's let's not rock this boat so I I um I, yeah, so that's the story about um, how he delivered me from it. I actually, I wrote a book to give men all the secrets, those techniques to give my girlfriends 10 orgasms in under an hour. I wrote a book uh, to give men that and, and to give women that too, because there's a whole lot of women out there that are having sex. And they're not having orgasms. Yeah, I've I spoke I have spoken to so many gay women that chose to go that way simply because you know, like the same attitude that I had expressed earlier, that it just wasn't worth it. You know, um, that you would give all your love and all your time, even have babies and children, and you would wind up sacrificing your dreams, your hopes, your life, your time, everything, and to not, and you don't get that kind of engagement back from him. And then don't even get to have good sex, you know, to be in a relationship with somebody and you committed and you done gave them babies and you can't even get pleasure in the bedroom, you know and it was a lot of women that was fed up with that and just and simply turned to homosexuality simply because of that so um women you can get the book and once you learn those techniques you don't ever have to have sad or sorry sex ever again for real because you'll know 
you know, women are always taught to be so conservative. We're taught to be conservative with our bodies and, you know, don't uh, experiment and explore and all of that. That's a naughty girl. That's a nasty girl type of stuff. No, that is your body. You can touch it. You you should know what pleases you. So, um, yeah, if you have that those complications in the bedroom, you don't ever have to have sorry sex again. When you get that book and you learn those techniques because, you know, it's different things in there that you can do to yourself while he's doing you <laughs> and um and you can get there you can get there every single time every single time guys have them every single time don't they right you should too so if you're not check out the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian and um the link to my koji to purchase the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian is in the description of this video and please feel free to check out um some of my other stories <laughs> all right y'all be blessed you are beautiful you are special you've got some kind of treasure inside of you i don't care if you don't think you do you do all right and um let your light shine. Y'all have a beautiful day. Thank you for spending time with me. Bye.